Yeah, this is gross. Well, Frost becoming one of my favorite frames to play was not on my bingo card this year, but yet here we are. What's more impressive is that nothing with him directly changed. No, no, it's an accumulation of things that happened mostly elsewhere that has brought him up and given him the quality of life he desperately needed. So what exactly changed then, Mr. YouTuber? Whoa, whoa. What a great question you guys just asked. I'm so glad that you did. Up on the screen are going to be a few topics in no particular order that affected Frost. Even more so, there are a few other areas that also has helped him, but I wanna go and put more focus on these for this video. Let's start off with the Archon Shards. The addition of Archon Shards have helped build crafting in so many ways. It's no joke how good these shards are to get. And for Frost, well, let's have a little look at what his Avalanche build alone can scale with. Energy pool, efficiency, strength, range, duration, animation, speed, even an augment mod to go ahead and be added. Now, when it comes to focusing solely on mods, that is a lot of mods that we can fit into the build and mess around with whatever outcome we prefer. But due to the limitations on how much capacity we can hold, it usually left Frost with some issues because yes, we can buff two or three of these areas, but leaving the other areas untouched or even worse due to corrupted mods, Frost has struggled with that quality of life. Archon Shards have entered the battle. From increasing your strength and duration to adding quality of life to your energy pool or even helping reduce your cast time, these shards are covering areas that we now don't have to cover, essentially freeing up space for those other areas we wanted to also increase. Now, this is just one example. Let's hop into the next. Additive Corrosive Projection. The change that they implemented to Corrosive Projection, making it additive to reduce an enemy armor, has made us lower the amount of strength needed to reach a 100% armor strip build for Frost, bringing us down from a total of 168% strength needed to just 138 saving us a total of 30% strength, meaning more capacity room, again, for our builds to benefit in other areas. Arcanes. It's no secret in the last two years, there's been a massive increase to Arcanes. Around 19 new ones were added in 2022, and another 17 were added just this year alone in 2023, with additions such as Molt Augmented or Molt Efficiency. These are some new Arcanes, which are also helping our four major stats receive increases outside of general mods. Not even talking about all of the other Arcanes Kings added, and yet still so many more to come in the future. Avalanche Augment receiving Overguards. Not that long ago, Eximus enemies received a new layer of protection to them named Overguard. This is essentially a health pool that you have to whittle down first before you can affect them with Warframe abilities that could crowd control them and make them essentially useless. Well, recently, DE added a new Warframe to the game called Calervo in the Deviri Paradox update, and with him came the first ever Warframe to benefit from the same layer of protection, Overguards. On introduction, Overguard wasn't really great. In endgame content, by the time you got some overguard up to protect you, the enemy was just going to one-shot it straight off you. And unfortunately, the likes of Calavo didn't have shields, so this led to problems with his survival. However, due to this, DE reworked Overguards to mostly scale with strength, but to also have an innate shield gate-like mechanic, where if your Overguard is removed due to enemy damage, you will have a 0.5 second invulnerability period to reposition and reapply whatever survival that you needed. Now, this is important because just before that change, they had also implemented an Overguard buff on a few other Warframes, but one in particular was Frost Avalanche Augment. Now, Coat and Allies will instead give them an Overguard layer of protection when the ability is cast and the Augment is installed. This hugely buffs Frost's position within a team, adding great quality of life survival tool for not just his allies, but even himself. Ideally, I would play within his third ability, the bubble first, cast it down, and then use it for the three seconds of invulnerability phasing, soak enemy damage, and then cast my fourth ability from inside to strip enemy armor, freeze them, and then also give myself Overguard. So if I do now happen to leave the bubble, I'm in a much better position to fight whatever I now face. Cold and freeze buffs. In 2023, we are still living our lives in a heavy slash viral heat kind of meta, where scaling into endgame content has been made much easier due to their changes a few years back. And cold, well, it's there, but it really wasn't, you know? Almost used for modification bonus damage to our builds, but not really for the status procs that it offered. Well, let's have a little look at these buffs then, shall we? Oh, cold now ramps up to a whopping 90% slow on enemies, and frozen enemies receive a debuff that helps critical builds deal more damage on top of what they were ready 
already doing anyways. So you can top this and pair it with another augment that he already has. This is just getting out of hand at this point. Again, did I mention armor strip on top of this? More dummy. The very paradox decrees. So we covered quite a few buffs and at this point you should hopefully be seeing the potential that Frost now has. In general missions, he is in a much better position and I cannot stress that enough. But hey, for the sake of things, we can go one step further for the video and show you what an S tier Warframe looks like in 2023. Baneful Harmony. And yeah, you're reading that right. Viral procs added whenever you deal cold damage. So here's the deal, guys. You cast one Icy Avalanche ability and you will strip enemy armor in one cast, give yourself and your allies a layer of protection with a 0.5 gate of survival, freeze the enemy if they don't have overguard and make them more susceptible to critical damage. Within the very paradox with a baneful harmony decree, then also apply a viral proc to that enemy that now has no armor. And there's even a 6.9% damage increase if you like and subscribe to the channel. I mean, guys, guys, this is what the Ice Age was all about. Total control, total annihilation. Over time, additions such as these are breathing life into Warframes that had issues before. And most of these changes are applied to other Warframes as well, but do yourself one favor. Up on the screen is a cheeky build that I am using for my Frost, and I cannot stress enough how much room there is to play around with whatever you want to. But give him a try again if you haven't lately, and I can promise you, you are gonna feel such a drastic difference from using Frost three years ago to using Frost today. And with that, I conclude my presentation. I, uh, I, I, I can't really drop the microphone here. So like, how do people end it without a mic? Should I, I'll just hit them. No, should I give it a little tickle? Guys, how do 